Now is where all the power is. Thus, it is only spiritual amnesia that can generate the illusions of the individual identifying with the unreal, the untrue, the illusory appearances. The remedy for that is actually shared very clearly in Romans 12 too. It states, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Thus, it is only illusions that the individual is identifying with that are generating the illusory realities, we could say, which are actually unreal. They are illusions. What is real is the good, perfect, and pleasing will of God, which is the result of being still and allowing the perfect, pleasing will of God to take care of everything for you. This is what I would like to discuss with you today. To do so in a way that I trust is beneficial for you, I titled today's conversation mind map, I am the complete auto-suggestion. Today's conversation is inspired by this quote here from James Allen, from his wonderful book called The Heavenly Life. He says, The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace is to find the divine center within oneself and to live in and from that instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances the clamors cravings and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual individual so by being still we realize that I am. By being still in the presence of God, we feel delight. We may call delight love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By being as I am, and very specifically, when I say be as I am, I'm referring to being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, beyond individual limited interpretations of conditions. Conditions that are formed in mind, these are beliefs, through inaccurate thinking, as we discussed in a video last week, the unfettered mind. The key is to think from the premise of truth. Everything else is illusory thinking. Thus, any auto-suggestion that is not from the premise of truth, knowing that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, is illusory and forms limiting beliefs in mind. More specifically, limiting beliefs in the subconscious mind. And the individual knows if these beliefs are limiting as thoughts arise in mind that are related to these beliefs, which manifest as, he says here, outer circumference of disturbances, clamors, cravings, and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual. To live the spiritual truth and to manifest the spiritual life, the heavenly life, on what appears as the journey to manifesting your visions, which are also symbols of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Manifesting your inherent prosperity. For example, in 2004, I read Think and Grow Rich. I learned about the term auto-suggestion. That was over 20 years ago. Today I say I am the complete auto-suggestion, as in when I say I am, I point to the fact that I am complete. When you say I am, you point to the fact that you are complete. The individual might not think this. As James Allen 
had also said, Whilst an individual is dwelling upon the past or future, they are missing the present. The present is now. This moment, I am. He says, they are forgetting to live now. This is such a simple and obvious truth. Yet the individual may forget it. Why is that? Well, as he says here, without wisdom to guide them and mistaking the unreal for the real, the individual says, if I had done so and so last week, last month, or last year, it would have been better with me today. Or, I know what is best to be done and I will do it tomorrow. He says the individual has all power now, but not knowing this, they say, I will be perfect next year, or in so many years, or in so many lives. The dwellers in the kingdom of God who live only in the now say, I am perfect now. That's what I mean by I am represents the complete autosuggestion. I am, that's God's name. Exodus 3.14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. So we know that I am refers to the Father and the true nature of reality, which is in a complete state of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. To think otherwise would be unwise and would generate illusions in mind, which the individual may be persistently identifying with, stubbornly persistently identifying with these untrue beliefs. So, it was through auto-suggestion that I released identification to the untrue illusory beliefs regarding prosperity, which is divine inheritance. By releasing the identification to the illusions of separation of prosperity up to a certain degree, I was able to experience being out of $50,000 debt. I was in $50,000 debt prior. I read Think and Grow Rich, and I set that as my first definite chief aim. And he said in the book, create auto-suggestions from the premise of having that which you already desire. Because desire means having, as we discussed in Sunday's video. I'll link in the description to it. That which you desire, you already have. You found it in the form of desire. Thus, desire means having. To think otherwise would be illusory. It would imply separation from the fact that you are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Now, the individual might not think this. Because, as he said, without wisdom to guide them and mistaking the unreal for the real, they engage in illusory thinking, such as, if I had done so and so last week, last month, or last year, it would have been better. Forget that illusory thinking. Acknowledge, I am perfect now. I am perfect now. Now, the individual might say, where is it? Where is the perfection? If I say I am perfect now, where is the perfection visibly? And they might not know that in that moment, they are judging by appearances. Through spiritual amnesia, they have forgotten John 7.24, which states, Judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment. Existence is perfectly complete now. You exist as everything. The individual might not think this because they may think in terms of separation. They think, well, this person is in New York, this other person is in France, this other person is in Australia. These are people that I would like to be in a harmonious relationship with for my business, yet they are separate. It's an illusion. 
because I have built businesses where I was able to work with people in various continents. We engaged in harmonious relationships. Every now and then we would meet up in various countries. The illusions of separation were unreal. What appeared was harmonious relationships because I was not identified with the illusions of separation. At one point, yes. At one point, the identification to illusions of separation would result in judging by appearances. I would actually be suggesting to myself in that moment the separation-based thinking, which would generate illusions. Again, not real. Only God is real. And created in the perfect image of God, you exist. I like to use the Robert Dilt's logical levels, which I modified a bit and put on the top for articulation, what I'm referring to. Existence itself is whole, complete love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I am bliss. Sat Chit Ananda. Truth, consciousness, bliss. Existence, consciousness, bliss. The fact that you exist means you are bliss. You can only think otherwise, yet that would be unwise. So the practice is if the individual appears to be thinking in terms of disconnect from the source and is emotionally relating to appearances, in a way, they think that the emotions suggest separation, which they don't. It's the individual labeling the emotions in a particular way that suggest separation, as emotions are energy in motion. We allow them to be released. And the illusory thoughts appear to disappear when the individual rests assured in the sure foundation of the Father. How does one do it practically? Well, we could do it right now. We have been discussing this over the last few weeks. And I shall continue to discuss this as in 2004, I didn't understand this to this degree, that I am complete that I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. And what does that mean, the Father is greater than I? Well, we know that pure consciousness is delightful. Genesis 1.3, And God said, The light shall be, and the light was. The light is pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is delightful. Thus, your true nature is delightful. As stated in Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. When a person lives from the one true reality of God, which James Allen refers to as the heavenly life, they acknowledge it. As stated in Joshua 1.3, I promise you what I promised to Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given to you. God has given delight. It's up to the individual to accept delight. So how does the individual accept delight? Well, one of the easiest ways that I found to accept delight is to be still in the presence of God and feel delight. That feeling of delight means I am complete. In the earlier stages, for me, the easiest way was through auto-suggestion. By creating statements that implied that I already have what I desire. That I already am the person that I desire to be. And reading them to myself in the morning when I would wake up and prior to going to sleep. Then later on, I started recording them and playing them on loop. These auto-suggestions were from the premise of truth, such as, I have X amount of dollars in my bank account. That's a statement that implies no separation from the fact that God is the infinite source of prosperity. There is no separation. 
it may only appear that way when the individual judges by appearances. These appearances do not indicate separation. For example, there are many ways the relationships could play out. The individual does not need to be in front of me right now for us to engage in a harmonious business. I don't need them to be in front of me right now to engage in a harmonious business. Because I am fulfilled, so I need not. Because I know that I am fulfilled. So in the earlier stages, I would apply auto-suggestions. Some examples for auto-suggestions, let's use the Robert Dill's logical levels here in relation to environment could be, I am experiencing a wonderful, harmonious environment right now. And this continues to appear more so wherever I appear in relation to behavior. Every step I take is from the premise of truth. Knowing that I am love, I relate lovingly. This appears more so as harmonious conversations, harmonious interactions, enjoying skill cultivation. Remaining in my flow. Capability, speaking of skill cultivation, can be looked at from the premise of truth, such as, I enjoy this experience as I am bliss. Thus, I enjoy these experiences. Now, in the earlier stages, this was frustrating to me. And why was it appearing frustrating to me? knowing that I exist beyond the illusion of frustration. It was because of identification to illusory beliefs of separation that would suggest thoughts of this skill that I appear to be cultivating is not at a certain degree. Thus, I can't feel happiness, which is untrue. I am happiness. That is a confession of the illusion of separation and no shame and condemnation. The opportunity is now to acknowledge I am perfect now, as James Allen said. The individual has all power now, but not knowing this, thinking not knowing this is what he's referring to. By being still in the presence of God, you feel delight. You feel love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Take a moment. Be still. Allow the untrue thoughts, the illusory thoughts of separation to be released. I like how he said very precisely that those thoughts represent the mere husks of life. What does that mean, the mere husks of life? As the individual experiences the outer appearances of reality through the single eye of God, only delight is real. Everything else are illusory shadows that only appear to disappear. These shadows represent the husks of life, illusions that only appear to disappear to reveal the fruits of God. So... What this means is, if I was identified with illusory thinking, no shame and condemnation, as it appears inevitably that I would realize that I am. Inevitably, everybody realizes that I am and enters the kingdom and lives the heavenly life. What is the heavenly life? Well, you may be noticing this. I trust you have. You appear to be not identified with the appearances to higher and higher degrees. You enjoy the appearances. You experience delight with the appearances. Experience love with the appearances. Happiness with the appearances. Peace with the appearances. Bliss with the appearances. Fulfillment with the appearances. Yet it is not dependent on the appearances. A practical example would be, after setting that initial definite chief aim, which was actualized to success, I set a number of definite chief aims. And what I found were, on the journey to manifesting these definite chief aims, were opportunities to release identification 
to the illusory beliefs in mind to be as I am, to acknowledge that I am complete. I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. And as I have been created in the perfect image of the Father, pure consciousness, that is how I have been created. That's how you have been created. Pure consciousness, which is delightful. The Father, through desire, gives me the next vision, which represents pure delight. So for me, it was starting and growing my IT business to success and other areas of my life, relationships, hobbies. Delight can appear in many different shapes and forms. It is what you are, you could say, destined to realize that I am, where I appear to arise from, is perfectly complete. Thus, I am perfect now. Even it says in Matthew 6, 8, For the Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. How do you know? Well, by experiencing delight now, by being still, and abiding as I am, being as I am, the outer appearances appear to change. And then we experience the manifestations of delight. They start to appear more so. They can appear in conversations with people. People might start talking with you differently. More accurately put, they appear to represent truth. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. It appears more so as your existing relationships transform to appear as loving relationships. You might notice when you're out and about, people are, you could say, a lot more friendlier to you. That's because the individual is not identified with these illusory beliefs of separation as they have been being as I am and integrating the truth of I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The fruits of God. Physically, emotionally, mentally, from the spiritual truth. So, it's 100% accurate when he says, the individual has all power now, but not knowing this, they think they don't know it. They, by being still, know it. Yet they may think they don't know it. Because of identification, to the illusions of separation. So, how does the individual know when they say things like, I will be perfect next year in so many years or in so many lives? Those are identifications of the old man. They're illusions of separation. I am perfect now, as he says. The dwellers in the kingdom of God who live only in the now say, I am perfect now. Release the identification to the illusions. They're illusions. Not real. Only God is real. God is reality. And the true nature of reality is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. What does this practically play out as, as the individual realizes that I am perfect now? Well, let's take conversations. We had a discussion recently on harmonious conversations what the individual thinks prior, during, and after the conversations. And if it's not from the premise of truth, then the individual can think from the premise of truth or release those identifications that are not from the premise of truth. I'll link the description to that video. Practically speaking, it plays out, let's say, if an individual wants to start a conversation with someone, they walk up to them and start a conversation with them. They engage in a conversation, and when the conversation is finished, it is crystal clear that the individual did not shame nor condemn themselves nor put on the mask of the false identity construct. So with the Robert Dilt's logical levels, we have a vision. Visions represent the desires from the heart. They're given and fulfilled by God. Desires from the heart, from the premise of truth, always. I have never seen them to be not from the premise of truth not for myself and not from anyone that I've worked with. They represent symbols of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. The vision appears to be sort of like a compass to appear to 
bring me to the realization that I am complete. It plays out as a theater. Now, the old man in the Bible, what is referred to as the old man, is the false identity construct, which is not from the premise of truth. We can also say false concept of self, false self-image, which is made up of untrue beliefs. So the individual may have opportunities on the journey to manifesting the vision in relation to capabilities, skills, behaviors, and environments. The untrue thinking may arise in mind, which those untrue thoughts arise from identification to untrue beliefs that make up the false identity construct. As these thoughts arise in mind, which can manifest if identified with, as he said here, circumference of disturbances, clamors, cravings, and argumentations, which make up the animal and intellectual. To live from the spiritual truth, the individual takes the opportunity right then and there. If identification appears, no shame and condemnation. Release that identification by being still. So as mentioned in the earlier stages, I would write down the identifications and create auto-suggestions to release identification to those untrue thinking patterns, which would release identification to the false identity construct, which again, in the Bible, it is referred to as the old man, so that I can be as I am, be the way as we refer to as the God-self concept, which is the way you have been designed to be, the way that you truly desire to be, and live your life from the premise so you can have the wonderful experiences in life that also happen to be in harmony and in contribution with everyone else. This is what I found. As I remain as I am, it appears that all people, environment, circumstance, information appear synchronistically and in synchronicity to be in harmony. Thus, the heavenly life is real. It's real life. I consider the heavenly life as the only reality of God. Anything else would be illusions, illusions of separation, not the reality of God. So how does one do it? Well, in relation to environments, behaviors, capabilities, the individual may release identification to the false identity construct to be as I am. The vision serves as a compass. For me, it was building my IT business to success achieving a certain amount of monthly income goal, having a certain amount saved and invested. There have been a number of definite chief aims that I have manifested physically. Yet what appeared on the journey to manifesting the vision were opportunities to release identification. What happens when I release these identifications to untrue thinking or untrue belief, which again makes up the old man, well, this identity becomes one from the premise of truth. This identity transforms to become the true identity from the premise of truth. And what is it experienced as? A flow-based, blissful journey. It is easy for me to remain in my flow. I remain in my flow. I don't appear to be identified with untrue thinking patterns. Wasn't the case in the earlier stages. Essentially being the conduit of divine expression. Being as I am. Where everything appears ideally automatically for the individual. The individual knows what to say, what to do. Lives from intuition. Listens exclusively to the still small voice which arises from the stillness because mental chatter is not there in mind. And if it does appear in mind, it's crystal clear to know that it's mental chatter as it's not from the premise of truth. It's not from the premise of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Therefore, untrue, unreal, those are illusions that only appear to disappear. And so do the outer appearances of life change to reflect the fruits of God. Again, identification to the husks of life play out as illusory theater. Yet when the identification to the illusions are released, God's reality, the perfect reality, is experienced. So practically speaking, on the journey to manifesting your vision, it's a simple act. 
in relation to environments, behaviors, capabilities. If any thought arises in mind or any appearances appear to suggest otherwise, that you are not perfect now, illusory, not real. Reality is, I am perfect now. I am perfect now. To think I will be perfect next year or in so many years or in so many lives generates further illusions of chasing this illusory so next year, so many years. I am perfect now, as stated in the Bible. This is how the dwellers in the kingdom of God live. I am perfect now. Put off the former conversations. If it's untrue, no longer identify with it. As he says, now is the accepted town. Now is the day of salvation. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, by being still in the presence of God, I realize that I am perfect now. I experience delight physically, emotionally, mentally as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Beyond interpretations of appearances, Thus, I am perfect now, not needing approval, validation, or confirmation from appearances, as all appearances reflect that I am perfect now, with increasing frequency on a continuous basis to reveal my heaven on earth as far as the senses perceive, as symbols of acknowledgement that I am the complete auto-suggestion. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.